Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hung, just another entrepreneur in Silicon Valley. When I came here eight years ago to the US, I was the first Vietnamese student to attend Stanford Business School since the war ended in 1975. Today, I'm seen as a very confident female entrepreneur, building product, pitching a startup contest. Most people think that I blend in pretty well, but very few people know the cultural shock that I've experienced along the way. This was me growing up all the way, all my life in Vietnam. And this was a very different Vietnam that you know today. It was an embargo country. What it means is you couldn't get a passport to leave the country. I never saw an ent a, a foreigner in my life until I was a teenager. Today, I'm going to tell you three stories about my cultural shock that I've experienced after coming here straight from Vietnam. Story one, in business school here, there's this thing called class participation grades. I soon learned and discovered that participation is graded by competing to speak with my classmates, to debate, to talk back to the professor. Our TA actually helped to take note of who speaks up. The more often you speak, the higher your class participation grades. In Vietnam, as you could have guessed, class participation is <laughs> sit down and stay quiet, especially when the teacher is speaking. We even had a class monitor to rat out those who make noise in class. <laughs> Story two, while I was living in San Francisco, I heard of this thing called online dating, and I decided to give it a try. In Vietnam, online dating would have been seen as taboo because you don't know who are out there using things online, and so they must be bad people. As a girl, I also am not encouraged to see many guys at the same time because I would be seen as a player. In the US, guess who I found online? People I already know, like classmates, friends of friends, even neighbors. I ended up going out on dates with people who turned out to live just a few blocks away from me. So in Vietnam, you are exclusive with someone in a relationship if you guys keep going out together. Not here, mm -mm. <laughs> After a few months seeing my now current boyfriend, one day he asked me to DTR. I was like, WTF is DTR. <laughs> Story three, show of hands, how many of you have visited Vietnam? All right, quite a few. For those of you who haven't, watch this video to see how traffic moves in Vietnam. <laughs> Spoiler alert, don't let that scare you. OK, well, I was told to wait for the video. <laughs> but yes, the video is not, <laughs> there it is. So as you can see, there is no traffic light, and things look quite chaotic, but somehow everyone ends up going to where they're headed. So one day, keep it in mind as context, one day I was driving around Union Square when I noticed a very strong glare in my rearview mirror. So I sped up a little, still saw it. I changed lane, still saw it. So I decided to take a left turn to escape, and yet I still saw it. Some pedestrians pointed at me, so I thought it must have been a flat tire. I rolled down the window, I heard this loud megaphone voices, couldn't tell if it's an accident. So I slowly pulled over, and guess what? I saw a cop follow me the entire time. In Vietnam, when a cop pulls you over, you leave your vehicle and walk to the officer, and so I did. I opened the door and stepped outside, and there's this loud megaphone voice yelled at me to step back in. I was like, whoops. So the officer walked over me, and he asked why I didn't pull over. As you would have guessed, I was so confused. After he checked my papers, wrote me a ticket, and left, I was still shaking. So then it was my first US traffic lesson. Whenever I see a strong glare in my rearview mirror now, I would stay put in the car, my hands on the steering wheel. I mean, I would never forget that. So I didn't know that there's a stereotype about Asian women driving in the US. And guess what? I came here and recognized that ironically, I fit right into it. <laughs> I mean, that's not something I'm most proud of ever, but oh well. These stories, as I'm telling today, are very funny, but not back then. I mean, you know, as you can see, my transition to the US hasn't been a smooth ride. But this is the reward of experiencing different cultures. And it keeps me going. And it's exactly these stories that led me to create Magpie, a female traveler's club, to connect women like myself, to meet up and help each other as we explore the world.